الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار عن عائشة رضي الله عنها قالت قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أحب الأعمال إلى الله أدوامها وإن قل متفق عليه عائشة رضي الله عنها نريس that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said the most beloved actions to Allah are those which are most consistent, even if they are little. Many times, brothers and sisters, we read the biographies of the prophets and the companions of the Prophet والسلام, and the early generations of Al-Islam. And when we read about their ibadah, how they would worship Allah Azza wa Jal, how they would pray at night, many raka'at, and spend a large part of the night in worship of Allah Azza wa Jal, and how some of the Sahaba would give a large portion of the money they had in charity. And we read in general the worship of the early generations of Al Islam. Although the purpose of reading about the early generations of Al Islam is to motivate a person and to push a person to aspire to be like one of them for a person to increase in his ibadah, for a person to worship Allah Azza wa Jal and try to be like the people of the past in his ibadah, in his worship, in his characteristics and in how a person lives his life. But unfortunately, many of us and many times a person reads about how the people of the past would live their lives, their worship and their ibadah and this could have the opposite effect. A person could read about their lives and instead of taking motivation and instead of the person feeling inspired to worship Allah Azza wa Jal, how the people of the past would worship Allah Azza wa Jal, instead the person feels incapable, incompetent. The person feels unable to match the people of the past in their ibadah. And Aisha radiallahu anha narrates the most beloved action to Allah Azza wa Jal are those which are most consistent even if they are little. And we find that the Quran, if one takes a short or brief look at how the Quran was revealed, the Quran came down in stages. Allah Azza wa Jal revealed the Quran over a period of 23 years. And the kuffar were people who had a lot of hatred and jealousy and envy. And from the things that they used to say to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, why was the Qur'an not revealed upon him in one go? Why reveal the Qur'an over a period of over two decades, over 23 years, over a very long period of time in different places, in different instances? Why not reveal the Qur'an in one time? And Allah Azza wa Jal said in response, We done so to strengthen your heart to strengthen the heart of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. And we find that the Qur'an came down in stages. And many of the ahkam 
many of the rulings of al-Islam came down in stages. And even some rulings that came down were initially considered to be permissible and went through stages until they became completely haram and impermissible upon the Muslimin. And Aisha radiallahu anha, she says, وَلَوْ نَزَّلَ أَوَّلُ شَيْءٍ لَا تَشْرَبُ الْخَمْرَةِ لَقَالُوا لَا نَدَعُ الْخَمْرَ أَبَدًا وَلَوْ نَزَلْ لَا تَزْنُوا لَقَالُوا لَا نَدَعُ الزِّنَا أَبَدًا If the first thing that would have been revealed to the Muslimin was do not drink alcohol, the people would have said we won't leave alcohol ever. We will never leave the consuming of, of alcohol. And if the first thing that was revealed to the people was to leave off Zina, the people would have said, we will not leave off Zina ever. And from this we find a benefit, how the Quran has revealed that a person himself has to go through stages and a person himself has to go through phases. And when we look at the lives of the people of the past, it's important and, and beneficial to do so. However, a person should step back and go to the initial stages. How did they start off? What was their ibadah? What was their, their life? What was their lifestyle? when they first became Muslimin, when they first took Islam as their religion. This is what's important for a person to understand. What's the first thing they done? When you take a look at the end of their lives, at the end of the journey, once they went through a process of self-rectification and self-development and overcoming their desires and fighting and warding off their plots and plans of the shaitan, at this stage, these people had ibadat that perhaps took decades for them to reach. And as Muslims, we should take a look at the beginning, how they started off their journey, and you work towards the journey they were working towards and towards the result they were working towards. The Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, he would be consistent upon the actions that he would perform. Aisha radiallahu anha narrates, kana amaluhu dimatan that his actions were very, very consistent, that he would actions he would perform in the day and he would be consistent upon performing these actions. And this is a trait and characteristic we find in the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam and his wives and his companions and the early generations of al-Islam, that they had actions they used to perform and a trait they used to have is they used to be very, very consistent in performing these actions. And a person performing an action and then leaving off an action was considered to be a deficiency. The Prophet alayhi salatu was salam said to Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhuma la takun mithla fulan kana yaqoom al-layl fataraka qiyam al-layl He said to him, do not be like such and such person. He used to stand the night prayer and then he left off the night prayer. And here, it's not a form of criticism that a person performs an action and he decreases in how much or what portion of the action he performs. Rather, the issue is in a person performing an action and then completely neglecting the action that he was performing. Rather, if he was to take the action he was performing and minimize it to an amount he's able to bear, this would be more beneficial for the person. And the Prophet, alayhi salatu was salam, he commanded us to only put upon ourselves that which we are able to bear. It's upon a person to only put upon himself and to only carry that which he is able to bear. Many times people start or begin actions of worship and after a very, very short period of time, the person leaves off the action. And a very practical way to get through this issue and to solve this issue is take actions in small amounts. Do not take an action in large amounts. For a person who takes an action completely and goes from not performing an action to performing it in large amounts, this person finds it very difficult, almost impossible to maintain this action that he is performing. Rather, the person should take it in small amounts and be consistent upon the small actions that he is doing. And Allah Azza wa Jal, he loves those who are consistent upon, upon their actions. Allah says in the Quran, Inna Allah yuhibbu at-tawwabin. Indeed, Allah Azza wa Jal, He loves those who repent. And here at-tawwabin, not those who repent once or twice, those who consistently and often repent to Allah Azza wa Jal. 
and as we find in the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha, the most beloved actions to Allah Azza wa Jal are those which are most consistent even if they are little. And there are many fruits of a person being consistent in actions that he performs. Even if these actions are very, very little. If a person was to take the Quran, even if he was to only recite the Quran to begin with for 15 or 20 minutes a day and build upon this, not take the Qur'an where he hasn't recited it or he's never recited the Qur'an and he wants to take it and recite for two to three hours a day. This is something which is unrealistic. Rather, the person should take the Qur'an, start with a small amount and keep it consistent. Two to three months or four months and slowly increase in how much Qur'an he recites. Likewise, a person who wants to give sadaqah. If a person is not accustomed to giving sadaqah, then he shouldn't be a person who comes and he starts to give a large amount of money consistently. Why? Because over time he will be unable to maintain this form of ibadah. Rather, if the person wants to take a small amount of money, a very small amount of money, and give in sadaqah, but on a consistent basis, this is more beloved to Allah Azza wa Jal, and the person will be able to be consistent upon this ibadah. And there are many fruits of a person being consistent upon the worship of Allah Azza wa Jal, even if they are little. The first benefit is the person's heart is constantly attached to Allah Azza wa Jal. The person consistently performs an ibadah. And every time he performs an ibadah, he is getting closer and closer to Allah Azza wa Jal. The second benefit is that a person who is consistent upon performing an ibadah, this person attains the love of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah says in the Quran, Inna Allah yuhibbu tawabin. Indeed, Allah loves those who often repent to Him. And the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam said, وَمَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلِ حَتَّى أُحِبَّهِ My slave does not continue. He is not consistent upon performing the voluntary actions until I love him. So the love of Allah Azza wa Jal, it comes after a person is consistent upon performing an action. Not the first or second time, only after being consistent upon performing the action. At that point, the person attains the love of Allah Azza wa Jal. Also from the benefits of a person remaining consistent upon performing an act of worship is that it becomes a cause for the person's supplications to be answered. And in the hadith we find that if a person, وَمَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلِ حَتَّى أُحِبَّهِ that my slave is not consistent upon performing an action until I love him. And he mentions in the hadith, وَلَا إِنْ سَأَلَنِي لَأُعْطِيَنَّ If he asks me, I will give to him. His du'as, his supplications, due to his consistency in worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah answers and responds to his du'a. Also from the benefits of a person remaining consistent upon performing acts of worship is that this prevents the person from falling into sin. And Allah Azza wa Jal mentions in Hadith Qudsi, Wala in la After he mentions that the person is consistent upon performing voluntary actions. If he seeks refuge in me, I will grant him that which he has sought. And Allah said in the Quran, Inna salata tanha anil fahshai wal munkar. Indeed, salah prohibits a person from evil and immorality. And this comes after a person is consistent upon performing the salah. For a person who worships Allah Azza wa Jal, at some point he will have to see the effects and benefits of worshiping Allah Azza wa Jal. A man came to the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam and he said to him, Inna fulana yusalli bil-layl fa'idha asbah sara. A man, he stands at night, he prays at night in worship of Allah Azza wa Jal. In the morning, the same person stills. At night, he worships Allah Azza wa Jal. In the morning, the same person, he stills. That what he is performing from his actions will have to prohibit the person and stop him from what he is doing. So the effects of worshiping Allah Azza wa Jal, the effects of living a life where you have consistent acts of worship, where you worship Allah Azza wa Jal, you have to see the effects of these acts of worship at some point. It may not be immediately, but with the consistency, which shows the sign of a person's iman, and it shows a, the sign of a person's love for Allah Azza wa Jal and worshiping Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah in return 
protects the person and, and protects him from falling into, into sin. Also from the benefits of a person remaining firm upon worship in Allah Azza wa Jal is that it comes and supports the person and it's the salvation from the person when he is in difficult times. The Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, he said, Ihfadu allaha yahfadhuk, ihfadu allaha tajidhu tujahak. Be mindful of Allah Azza wa Jal. Be mindful of the commands of Allah Azza wa Jal. Be mindful of the prohibitions of Allah Azza wa Jal and Allah will preserve you wherever you are. And Allah Azza wa Jal, he saved Yunus alayhi salam and from the reasons of why he saved Yunus alayhi salam when he was in the belly of the whale, قَالَ تَعَالَى فَلَوْلَا أَنَّهُ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُسَبِّحِينَ لَلَبِثَ فِي بَطُنِهِ إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبَعْثُونَ If he wasn't from those who used to do tasbih, from those who used to remember Allah Azza wa Jal, then he would have remained in the belly of the well until the day where people are, are resurrected. And it shows that only because of his actions in times of ease, that when he was in a time of hardship, the effects of that worship, the effects of that consistency in that form of worship came to save him later on. And in the hadith where the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, Ta'arraf ila Allahi fil rakha'i ya'arifka fi shidda. Make yourself known to Allah azza wa jal in times of ease. Make yourself known to Allah azza wa jal in times of ease. And Allah will know you in times of difficulty. When a person performs acts of ibadat, when a person returns to Allah azza wa jal, a person seeks forgiveness. A person gives sadaqah when he has the ability to give sadaqah. A person prays when he's able to pray. When a person is now in difficulty, Allah Azza wa Jal will come and remember this person by supporting him and helping the person the same way the person remembered Allah Azza wa Jal when he was in times of ease. Also from the benefits of a person remaining firm and consistent upon worships, even if they are little, is that this person is from those who Allah grants him shade on Yawmul Qiyamah, when there is no shade apart from the shade of Allah Azza wa Jal. In the hadith of those who have the shade of Allah Azza wa Jal, he mentions, وَرَجُلٌ قَلْبُهُ مُعَلَّقٌ بِالْمَسَاجِدِ A man whose heart is attached to the masajid, meaning he goes to the masjid regularly. He prays in the masjid and it's something that the person is known for until he becomes attached or his, his heart is considered to be attached to the masjid. This person will be from those who Allah grants him shade on Yawm al Qiyamah. And also from the great benefits and bounties of Allah Azza wa upon his slaves is that when a person has an action he always performs, when he has the ability to perform the action, now when he is unable to perform the action, he still receives the same reward. If a person was to fast, when he has the strength to fast in his youth and his strength. If a person reaches a time in his life or a person reaches or becomes ill, even in that time, the person will be rewarded as if he was fasting. And this is from the bounties of Allah Azza wa Jal upon his slaves, that person is rewarded for his actions that he is consistent upon in times where he's unable to perform these actions. And this is from the great mercy and bounty of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allahumma inna nas'aluka fi'l al-khayrat wa tarak al-munkarat wa hubb al-masakeen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum fa astaghfiruh innahu huwa al-ghafur al-raheem. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafi khalqillah Muhammad ibn Abdillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawm al-deen. A characteristic and trait that as Muslims we should try to take from the Sahaba is being consistent in actions that we perform. And there are many actions a person can perform and a person has to look at his abilities, his strengths, what he's able to perform and take small actions and be consistent upon that. And to, rem and to mention a few actions a person can try to implement, a few practical tips or actions a person can try to implement even if they are small. Number one, that which pertains to the recitation of the Qur'an. If a person finds himself unable or very, very weak when it comes to recitation of the Qur'an, then the person should take a small amount. The person should take a small amount of the Qur'an and recite it often. 
if a person was to start with something very, very small, 15 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, according to your ability and according to where you are. Take the Qur'an and now build on your relationship with the Qur'an. Start from somewhere. Every single day. Set a time before you sleep, first thing in the morning. Set a time every single day where you open the Qur'an and you recite it. And have this as something which is consistent and you are consistent upon until you die. And never leave off the recitation of the Qur'an. And by reciting the Qur'an, it allows a person to be from the people of the Qur'an where the Prophet ﷺ said, اقرأ القرآن فإنه يأتي يوم القيامة شفيعا لأصحابه Recite the Qur'an for it will come on يوم القيامة as an intercessor for its companions. Its companions, i.e. those who recite the Qur'an often. Even if you recite a small amount, this could be something that makes you from the people of the Qur'an on يوم القيامة where the Qur'an comes and acts as an intercessor for you. Another act of ibadah the person can perform the act of giving sadaqah. And as the hadith mentions where the Prophet ﷺ said, was sadaqatu burhan. Giving charity is an evidence or a proof of a person's iman. If a person is unable to give a lot of money in charity or a person finds himself unable to give away that which he possesses from money, then give away a very small amount. So a very small amount that will not affect you. And it won't make the person feel like he's losing out on something. Start with a very small amount, give charity for the sake of Allah Azza wa and keep it as something which is, which is consistent. And that consistent act of giving money in charity, even if it's a very small amount, it will act and serve as a proof of a person's iman. Another act of worship a person can perform is the act of accustoming yourself to remembering Allah Azza wa Jal. So learning adhkar, remembrances, that are very easy and light upon the tongue, but have a very heavy, or are very heavy on the scales of Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And many of the hadith we find regarding the virtues of adhkar, of remembrances, such as the hadith where it mentions, Man qala subhanallahi wa bihamdihi mi'ata marra huttat anhu khatayahu wa in kanat mithla zabad al-bahr. If a person says, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, 100 times a day, then all of his sins will be removed, even if they were the size of the foam of the sea. Now, a person saying, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, something very, very light upon the tongue, something that will only require a number of minutes, two to three minutes for a person to say. However, the reward of performing this action and being consistent upon this action has a very great virtue and could be the reason for a person's sins to be forgiven and ultimately for a person to enter Jannah on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us from those who are consistent upon performing acts of ibadat and to make us from those who Allah grants them a good ending. Allahumma a'izza al-Islam wal muslimin Allahumma a'izza al-Islam wal muslimin wa adhilla shirka wal mushrikin wa adhilla shirka wal mushrikin Allahumma ansar deenak wa a'li kalimatak اللهم انصر دينك وأعلي كلمتك اللهم انصر من نصرهم واخذل من خذلهم إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم الجليل يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون